you see, the, there were no uh, people of our race in the Navy, not no girls. We had been campaigning for that privilege, but nobody joined. I kept watching the newspapers, and I thought to campaign for certain civil rights and then not use them, to me, is very futile, and somebody ought to join up after they campaigned. So nobody did. So I thought, well, if I go and I survive, maybe someone else will come. Although I had applied for the Navy, and they kept writing back saying, there is a technicality. They didn't tell me what the technicality was. So I said, well, let me try the Coast Guard. And the Coast Guard recruiter was just so welcoming. She wanted to be the first one to enroll an African-American. And I didn't know anything about military life. When they told us to go to basic training, I took a truck, a trunk with all my luxuries in it. I didn't know. The seven girls, other girls that went when I went, all had duffel bags. Everything was new to me. They get you up at five o'clock in the morning and you do exercises for an hour before you went to breakfast. And then, of course, you had to polish your floor, even though it didn't need polishing. <laughs> and, uh, uh, they thought up chores for you. We went to Manhattan Beach Training Station, and we stayed there six and nine, 15 weeks, I think. And then when I graduated from Yeoman School, I was sent to Boston. The head of the Yeoman School, Lieutenant Isley, had written to all of the Coast Guard stations. There were 11. Uh, uh, districts, and the only one who answered yes, they would take an African American was Admiral Derby in Boston. I was a third class yeoman, but they gave me a promotion on discharge, but I didn't know it. You know, I got this little epaulette to put on your shoulders with, uh, with two stripes instead of three. I was in the separation center, and I typed the, the discharges, but you had to make sure you interviewed the gentleman because they wanted all of their commendations, you know, to be sure they were on there, and uh, all of the, the service uh, sites where they had been, and, and, you know, it's very important to have your discharge accurate. <laughs> 1945, I joined, and March the 9th was the day we went on duty. Uh, and then they disbanded the spars in 1946. I think I was the last one out because I had to type my own discharge. There wasn't anybody to type it. <laughs> I, as I said, I didn't know anything about the military before going in. And uh, I didn't know many people that were not of my hue. And it was good for me to mix with other people and find out, you know, how they thought and what they were like. It taught me a lot about order and uh, priorities. But I would like to see more of us realizing you know, that our country needs us. And I'd like to see more uh, girls consider spending some time in the military if they don't have a job at all and they are they have ambition and they don't know what heights they might reach. It's really nice to have people with different points of view and different kinds of upbringing. And uh, the world would really prosper from more of that. <laughs>